Hello and welcome to the show. We start today's silly car build with a Mazda RX-7, or as we know it on Fail Race as the Buzzbox. This car, whenever we've had a versus community and somebody has run one of these with the standard engine in it, you can hear it uh, from everywhere, basically. This is one of the loudest cars I think we've ever had. <laughs> odd, odd Forza, I can't remember what, what race it was. I know we were at Sakuba and there are a couple of these running and from whatever point I had the replay camera in the distance you could hear this car it is phenomenally noisy with the standard engine however the standard engine is not going to remain in this car and there is a particular reason why I picked this vehicle because I wanted to use the quadrotor racery engine that's why I'm using the the RX-7 uh, it's the same engine Husky used in the MX-5 in a challenge a while back when we tried to beat an aerial atom it's, that is the it's the same engine. It makes an incredible noise. This is a phenomenal engine. Um, so we're going to give it a go. Uh, standard wise, 690 horsepower. It produces. It reckons just the engine alone will be enough to get the RX-7 to 231 miles an hour. I'm not sure how well it'll get it around the corners though. Of course, this challenge is all about building the car and seeing how it compares to the Coenseg Agera when we take it around the Road America the alternate route. West alternate? Is it West? I, I don't care about names. I know the layout. Um, so first things first, tyres. We're going to be putting quite a lot of power down through the rear wheels on this car and as ever with very slidey handling characteristics or just general lack of grip you get in Forza 5. Race tyres are absolutely essential. Now we don't really have any limits to the upgrades on this car. Let's just see how much power we can get out of it. 718 horsepower, not quite as much power as I was expecting from this engine actually. I thought that was going to be a bit crazier on the power front, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess, okay, is, is this the 787B's engine? I'm going to, presuming it's going to have to be the 787B's engine. Um, and yeah, I guess there were limitations on, I don't know how on earth, I don't know how on earth r rules and regulations on Le Mans would work with a rotary engine. Um, yeah, I have no bloody clue on any of that. But, um, okay, we can only get 718 horsepower out of it. Perhaps not quite as much power as I would like, although this car is quite light. £2,300, near enough. We will stick a roll cage in there, so that'll, that will increase it up a little bit. Um, okay. Okay, we're going to have not too much weight. Not as much terrifying power as we had last time. Or certainly not the terrifying power to weight ratio we had last time, although I don't think anything is ever going to beat that, uh, pretty much. I'm just going to stick on the rest of these upgrades. Gearbox could be quite important. I don't know what the gear ratios are going to be like on this. Probably, I don't know actually. It's Sometimes sometimes you can stick on a standard gear, or you can stick on a race gearbox without tuning it and it'll be fine. Other times it seems to be a bit funny about it. Uh, I. I have no idea what causes that, of course running this car with a standard gearbox and, well, it shouldn't work in theory, but this is Forza, so you can get away with stuff like that, um, but yeah, running it with a standard gearbox would cause, uh, it would probably have wonky, wonky gear ratios, not designed for this much power. Um, okay, PI-wise, we're looking at about mid-S class. Fairly sensible, fairly sensible PI from this. Uh, we're going to put a snowplow on the. <laughs> that is that is a strange, strange position. Position, I think I, I've I've said that word many times. I don't know why I just suddenly failed to say it then. That is an odd location. That's probably that's an easier word. I can say location. That's that's good. Sure, it's going to go there. <laughs> And then we're going to want a, a rear wing. Please be silly. Please be silly. Please be silly. Uh, yeah, it's pretty silly. The Forza is, it tends to be a bit more sensible now with its rear wings. It has, well, not quite that. Um, it has a little lip wing that it likes to put on cars rather than huge monstrosities uh, most of the time. That's, yeah, I mean, that's a, a pretty odd looking wing. We're, we're going to have that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a bumper. Can we have any lightweight super lightweight bumpers or are you all super heavyweight bumpers and there don't seem to be any advantage to you sometimes these reduce drag on the car if actually let's just put the speed to how much hold on let's let's have a look what does it reckon if we leave it normally 219 miles an hour it reckons this gives a car for, to get around a track remember this when i'm building these vehicles these are designed for competing around a track these are not designed to be speed run cars hence why i keep the arrow on them uh, what happens if we put that on how much 
Wow, it makes like a... Does it doesn't make a mile an hour difference? No, it makes like half a mile an hour difference. Any of any of these... Now I'm, I'm now picking bumpers based on what can make the highest top speed. I think they're going to be the same. Yeah, okay. Now we go back to... I uh, don't really like... Don't, definitely don't like that one. That one there's got a weird lip. So we're going for that one. <laughs> and side skirts. How much... This, I just want to see how much of a dip. So we're at 220.1. Two how, how fast do you make it now? 220.7. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you might as well put these on since they're here. Um, minus 1% on the drag. I'm not... Uh, everything's going... Oh, well, never mind. Never mind about that. A little bit heavier. So we're sitting at just under £2,400 for this car with 718 horsepower, big race tyres and various aero parts. Oh, ooh, we could actually get a little bit more PI out of it. I keep forgetting this. Like, I... I never really bother with wheels. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Where's the die mags? Die mags are the lightest wheels, aren't they? I think they are in here. Die mags. There we go. Um, oh yeah, I never, I never remember about wheels when it comes to cars. I just, I, I'm not a big fan of modifying, modifying of cars. Like I like doing crazy things to cars. I don't really give a crap about the visual upgrades to cars. And I always forget about the wheels because you can save an awful lot of weight on these. So when you're building a car to be as fast as it can be. I do often forget um, to, to, to put the wheels on to, to lose some, I think it was 22 pounds it lost by putting those wheels on, which is pretty, that's a pretty hefty amount. Um, or it is when you're fine tuning a car, shall we say. So, the challenge is, we go to the West Alternate route. I, I like the road amount of this track. I like this layout of this track. Uh, I think it's a fairly good place for testing. This is more focused around a bit higher speed. It's the, the, the corners are kind of medium speed around here. There's not too many really tight sections apart from the first corner. And the rest of the track is all medium speed. And then there are quite a few straights. So it's it's a little bit of a higher speed test track than my normal locations I would go to. Now when we re ran an Aguera around here uh, a couple of weeks ago. I did, or perhaps last week, I don't know. Time, I, uh, time is confusing. Uh, I did a 126.0. 0.456. I am now going to try and beat that within four laps. It's, I did four laps and that was the time I got out the Agera. I'm going to do four laps with this. Please don't be as crazy as the last car we had round here. And now the sound wise is, is going to be pretty nuts this thing. Um, oh, understeer. Bloody hell. <laughs> okay, we got a lot of understeer in this car. Uh, oh yeah, we also have all of the revs all of the time again. It doesn't... It <laughs> <laughs> there is a tiny fraction of a movement off the rev counter. Uh, woo, okay. We've got quite a bit of speed. Not quite as much speed as we had out last time. How do we do it on the brakes? None. There is none of the brakes. Whoopsie. There is none of the brakes whatsoever um, in this car. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty good. In, sort of, if you put them into context with normal cars, but it doesn't stop quite as sharply as the, uh, the, two, the, the 11, not the 211, sorry. Uh, handling wise, hmm, it's a little bit understeery at times, not atrocious as of yet. Putting the power down isn't as bad as last week, but that's not surprising considering we have probably half the power to weight ratio, maybe not quite, but um, yeah, not quite as terrifying as last time out. Uh, still mighty fast on the acceleration front, how are we doing on the turn in here? It's not. I think I just got a little bit. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't want to turn into that first corner. Here's a, here's a good test of uh, understeer. Uh, it's not. It's not as terrible as at first thought. Oh, the back end does like to come round. It is a lively car, as you would expect, really, from this much power. Okay, first lap time of 34. I mean, that is from a standing start, and I did have a crash. So, yeah, not particularly surprising uh, on that front. This isn't quite as crazy to drive as I thought it might be. I mean, it sounds amazing. Great sounding engine, this. But uh, <laughs> won't hear because I'm talking. Uh, no, this is this is an awesome engine. Uh, not as silly. Not as not quite as fast as the Agera either down here. The Agera was hitting 180 before the braking zones, and the Lotus would have done if I could have taken the corner flat out. This you can't. You can take the corner flat out. Sorry, it's just not quite as quick as that Agera. Oh, wheel on the grass. Don't want to be doing that. And yeah, we've got a little bit of oversteer. I say a little bit of oversteer. We, when you have this much power in a rear-wheel drive car, unless the car is phenomenally good, it is always possible to get it sliding. Um, but you have got to be careful 
in something like this. I mean, 718 horsepower is, a, is an awful lot, but it's not sort of an insane amount. Uh, not as insane as some of the, the vehicles that you can have, that you can create on here. Uh, this is... Yeah, this is actually quite controllable. Like, this is more sensible than I had thought it would be. I thought it would try and kill me all the time, but it isn't. It's... Like, okay, I've got to be careful on the throttle, as you would with any supercar. The, the fact that there is a lot of power in a car that doesn't weigh that much, and this is still pretty damn light. Um, yeah, it's pretty good to drive. How are we doing on the lap times? We are a long way off on the lap time front, though. We are quite a bit off on there. I just think this car doesn't quite have the speed of the Agera. Um, I mean, yeah, this is a phenomenally quick car, but we know the Agera is very, very quick as well. So, we... Yeah, just don't quite have the speed, don't quite have the acceleration. A little bit unpredictable, uh, certainly more so than the Agera, but a lot easier to handle than some of the crazy contraptions I've driven. Um, yeah, this is not as insane as it sounded on paper. Um, <laughs> I was looking for a car to use the quad rotor that I hadn't driven before, so I figured I'd use this one in. And it's pretty... I mean, yeah, it's a bit oversteery, but it's controllably oversteery, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll stick the tail out, but I mean, I'm being pretty brave on the throttle here, and it's still, it's still being fine, it's still not, not trying to kill me at every possible turn. I'm actually quite impressed with this car. It deals with the, with the power and everything really well. I, mean, I would like a little bit sharper brakes on here. I do not trust these brakes to get the car stopped. They are just that, yeah, they're not quite as nice as I would like them to be. Uh, not quite as powerful, don't quite get stopped as quickly as some of the other vehicles we've had. Um, but it's, apart from that, I can't really complain about anything on this car. Yeah, got to be careful putting the power down out of that long banked corner. We're still 28.6, uh, we're not going to do it. No, oh, we've hit the bump awkwardly. Ah, We are a good couple of seconds off. I mean, sure, I could probably take it. Again, I could spend more time lapping, I could get... Maybe I could get it down to the time, but if I spent more time lapping with the Agera, you could get that down to the time, you could get that going quicker. This is the most sensible of the silly cars that I have built, by a long way. Yeah, braking is a slight issue, I would like more powerful brakes. Other than that, I, mean, I don't have any major, <laughs> major... That's really not what I expected to say about this Mazda. I thought this would be lunacy. But uh, it isn't when uh, Husky had the rear-wheel drive MX-5. That was lunacy. Um, but no, this is pretty, pretty safe. I, and I say that when I'm talking about 700 horsepower sort of sports car that's quite light. And this is as safe as it gets with this kind of vehicle. It's really not that bad to drive. Just doesn't quite have the brakes, and I don't think it quite has the grip of the Agera. Hence why. It is a bit slower on the lap time front. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a real surprise. That shouldn't handle as well as it does, but it is. Well, we aren't going to beat the Agera's time. It is going to be a 128 for the Mazda, one of the slower cars that's, uh, that we've had here. Um, but it's certainly the easiest one of the previous cars I've had to drive. I mean, it got around there. Okay, the bump can sp spun it out, but the bump spins out plenty of cars through here. Otherwise, that's a pretty solid car. That's a pretty... I wouldn't say easy, but it's certainly not as terrifying as some of the vehicles that uh, that we have driven. So, no, we can't beat the Agera's time, but we are going to go for a speed run with the car. I'm going to see what, uh, what this car can do. Uh, as I said, this challenge is about having a track car. This is about getting it around the track, so the aero is going to stay on because that is the car that I've built for this. So we're going to, have to see how fast it can get in its current state. And the aero is needed for the handling when it comes to the quarters, so that's why it's there. Normally, eh, I don't like running aero on most of my cars. I've said this before if people watch the Versus Community videos. Um, that I put out. I tend not to run aero because I like having a bit more straight line speed than the cars around me. Um, I want to have that, that, little, that little straight line speed advantage helps when it comes to overtaking. So I tend to build cars without aero in Forza 4. In Forza 5 things are a bit different because there is just less grip in general. And if you take off aero, sure you might be able to get that little bit more speed in a given class. Um, the handling is so, so important on Forza 5 to get a car that's reliable, predictable, and that's not suddenly going to try and throw you at a wall that uh, I have 
tended to run more aero on cars in uh, in Forza 5. Uh, and if we're trying to do 220 in a car that's not designed to do 220, I think the aero might actually help it, you know, kind of stay on the road. Um, we saw the problems you had with the Lotus when it, when, it was, when it was doing the speed run. Yeah, it needs to actually stay on the road. It's no good hitting 290 and then have the car fly into a wall because the front end's come up and you've lost all steering. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna, this is how I'm going to run this. That's just the way that it works. Um, so the, the what did the thing the benchmark reckon 220? Oh, we've we've gone we've gone exploring. Well, this is a new part of the track I haven't been to before. Um, it's fine. No, this should this should be a new layout. Whoopsie. Uh, <laughs> I shall make up my own layout around Le Mans. Let's forget this proper bit of track and we shall go exploring all of the gravel traps. Look, we could go exploring over there as well to the left, but I'm not going to. Um, right. Oh, oh, what did that? What did I do there? That's an odd one. That felt like a like a, a wonky diff. This, I definitely put a racing diff on this. What on earth? I wasn't even putting that much. I don't know what happened there. Was there a bump? That no, I don't think so. Uh, that was an odd spin. Okay, okay. I don't know what caused that one, but uh, we'll forget about that. Let's, let's not let's not worry about that one. Let's see what we can do. Two twenty is the goal. Sometimes the benchmark can underestimate, sometimes it can overestimate it. Let's go and find out what this car can do. Certainly not the savage acceleration of the 211. It hasn't got that speed. Uh, the 211, I think, was doing about... Not 211, the 11. I will get them right eventually. Possibly about... Who knows? Um, 214, 215... Yeah, I believe it could do 220. Are we going to hit it down this straight? Can we make the turn at the end of the straight at 200? We are slightly wandering. Slightly wandering, of course. <laughs> I'm trying not to touch the steering so that we have no un unnecessary friction. Try and keep the speed up. Come on. Come on, car. We're going to have to steer through here. We can make the corner unlike with the Lotus. So, I mean, it's got that going for it. Uh, oh, now we're going uphill now, aren't we? And we will go downhill after this, but we're going to have to stop for a corner. No, we can't can't do it. Oh, we're going to not stop. There's a wall there. Ow. Bugger. <laughs> I might have killed the Mazda. I stabbed, I slammed on the brakes and locked it up. That's never good. Oops. I did get it stopped down to about 90, which is better than the 220 that it had. Um, I broke did it. I completely broke. <laughs> yeah, I may have killed the Mazda. And speed-wise, though, 220 is certainly within the realms of possibility for this car. Uh, if I'd done the reverse run, I think I would have got it. Um, damn it, I'm annoyed now. And uh, I, I was pushing it, and uh, it wasn't going to stop. Uh, so, uh, conclusion-wise, on the Mazda, pretty sensible for a silly car build. I know that's contradictory, but a fairly sensible car, not too hard to drive. Sure, you know, it's got a lot of power, it will slide around if you aren't careful. But yeah, that's remarkably good. However, it is not as fast as the Koenigsegg Aguera, and I think it is largely down to the brakes let it down a bit, and it just doesn't quite have the grip through the corners as some of the other cars. However, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.